To the north of the Ganges River was the great kingdom of Kosal, made fertile by the river Surayu. Its capital was Ayodhya, built by Manu, the famous ruler of the Solar Dynasty. King Dasarath ruled the kingdom from the capital city of Ayodhya. He had fought on the side of the demigods, and his fame spread in the three worlds. He was the equal of the demigods Indra, the king of the gods, and Kubera, the god of wealth. The people of Kosal were happy, contented, and virtuous. The land was protected by a mighty army, and no enemy could come anywhere near. It contained forts with moats around them, as well as many defensive installations, and true to its name, Ayodhya defied all enemies. Dasarath had eight wise ministers, ever ready to advise him and execute his orders. Great sages like Vasista and Bamadev and other Brahmins taught the religious codes and performed rituals and sacrifices. Taxes were light and punishment of crime was just and inflicted according to the capacity of the wrongdoer. Surrounded by the best counselors and statesmen, the king's splendor shone as the rising sun. Many years rolled smoothly by. In the midst of all this prosperity, Dasarath had one regret. He had no son. One day in early summer, he thought of performing a horse sacrifice for progeny. He consulted his religious masters and, on their advice, got sage Rishasringa to perform the jagya or sacrifice. The jagya was a grand affair, and the invitees included many of the kings of the day. It was no easy thing to perform sacrifices. The location and erection of the sacrificial platform had to be attended to in detail, strictly according to prescribed rules. There were experts whose guidance was sought in arranging things. It meant the building of a new camp city, capable of accommodating tens of thousands and providing hospitality and entertainment for the invitees who included the princes and sages of the land. When all the arrangements were complete, the ceremonies were set in motion strictly as enjoined by the holy books. Contemporaneously with the Jagya in Ayodhya, there was a conference of the demigods or devas in heaven. The devas complained to Lord Brahma that Ravan, king of the demons, drunk with the power acquired by the boon granted to him by Brahma, was causing them untold misery and hardship. They represented to Brahma it is beyond our capacity to subdue, conquer, or kill Ravan. In the security of your boon, he has grown wicked and insolent, and ill-treats all, even women. His desire is to dethrone Indra, the king of the gods. You are our only refuge, and it is for you to devise a method by which Ravan can be slain and his despotism ended. Brahma knew that he had granted to Ravan the boon prayed for by him, that he should be invulnerable and invincible against the demigods, demons, celestials, and other such beings. In his arrogance, Ravan did not care to ask for security against mankind. As Brahma revealed this fateful omission, all the demigods rejoiced and turned to Lord Vishnu, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Absolutely surrendering themselves to Vishnu, the devas begged him to be born as a man and to put an end to Ravan and his atrocities. Vishnu agreed and assured the devas that he would be born as four sons of King Dasarath, who was then performing a sacrifice for progeny. As the sacrifice was in progress and as the ghee was poured into the ceremonial fire, the flames shot up to meet it. Then from out of the flames came a majestic figure, resplendent like the noonday sun, holding a golden bowl. Calling King Dasarath by his name, the figure said, The demigods are pleased with you and are answering your prayer. Here is Payasam, sent by the gods for your wives. You will be blessed with sons if they drink this divine beverage. With joy unbounded, Dasarath received the bowl as he would receive a child and distributed the payasam to his three wives, Kausalya, 
Sumitra and Kaikeyi. He asked Kausalya to drink a half of the payasam, and he gave a half of what remained to Sumitra. Half of what was then left was drunk by Kaikeyi, and what remained was given to Sumitra again. Dazarath's wives were happy as a beggar suddenly coming upon buried treasure, and in due course all of them were expectant mothers.